folks, I just spent the week harassing my grade 12s to give me more information while I'm teaching. And by the end of the week, I had them trained. And I've taught them before. They should know better. So I'm hoping it takes less time for you. Um, when I ask about things, if you don't feel like raising your hand, that's no problem. I'll never call on you if you don't raise your hands. But when I ask if, if, that's, if that's going well, if that's pretty good, give me a nod or a, a shake or something like that so I know. If I get mostly nods, I'm like, okay, yeah, that's pretty clear. If I get a bunch of shakes or even one shake, I'll be like, hmm, maybe I'll explain that again. You know, everybody's staring at me anyways. No one's going to see that you're shaking your head. You know, and it started to work really good by the end. I can move through the lessons pretty quick because I knew where people were at. Okay, Exponent Laws Part 1. Very soon in, within this lesson, I'm going to ask if you've seen most of this before. Because it depends on the school and depends on COVID, of course, how far you got with exponent laws. I'm going to teach it like you've never seen it before. But if I know that you've seen it before, maybe I can move things along a little bit. Okay, okay exponent laws part one. Got the title down? Ready to rock? Investigation. We're going to investigate some exponent laws here. Okay. You don't need to copy all the nonsense at the top. So you can just write down, what does three, the little five up there, actually mean? And I'm going to explain it again because I already got to one person on the test who ran into this three with a little five up there, and they wrote 15. Now, I don't think that actually, I think it means they're really smart, actually. It's easy for your brain to scream that. When you see a three and a five like that, you've trained your brain so hard. When you see three and five, you go, 15, boom. So that happens to be in your year in your test. I wouldn't worry about it too much. I, you know, I just go, oh, got to slow it down when it's in exponents. One more time, because we're going to need it in this lesson. One more time, what does this mean when you got a three with a little five there? It's the perfect answer. We love that word repeat in there. It's repeated multiplication. It's saying multiply by three, but do it five times in a row. That's where the five comes in. So you get three times three times three times three times three. I think the one on the test had it four times or something like that with a negative, something like that. And so here we go with five times. So I'm not going to write down exactly the exact value. I'm really talking about what does that exponent mean, because that's what I need for exponent laws. We can use this idea to help build several laws for exponents. And you can picture them as shortcuts. Um, they, they're going to give you some headaches, but know that they're shortcuts. They're making the math go faster when we use these exponent laws. How many exponent laws do I have in this first lesson? I think three. Three exponent laws today in this lesson, and then I'll show you one more, uh, two more later this afternoon. One you've already seen. But. Law one, the multiplication law. Okay, if you haven't been copying down exactly so far, that's okay. I suppose, but really get this down. Really get exactly what I write down here, every little bit of it. I know it's long, and if you've seen it before, it's sort of boring, but one more time get this down because it really helps to, to have the exponent laws in your brain as opposed to memorized. Or, well, both, we want both. We want to really get them, and we want to be really fast at using them at the same time. Not yet, soon, soon. The big idea of exponent law one. Let's say you're running three to the power of five times three to the exponent four. And I need to tell you that these exponent laws aren't for little numbers like this, usually, fives and fours. They are for fives and fours, but they're for situations that get bigger than that even. By the time I finish this exponent law, we'll be ready for as big a numbers as you want to put in there. But we'll start with something reasonable. And you're not going to like what I'm going to do next, because I'm going to ask you to write this down, because it really helps in your understanding if you write this down. 3 to the exponent 5 times 3 to the exponent 4 means all those threes. Write them all down and then decide how many there is. You can either count them or you can either go, I, I, I know what's happening. I know how many threes there's going to be here. But at least once, write them all down. And the reason I'm getting you to write them down now is so you don't have to write them down in your homework. If you write this down now, when you do your homework, you're going to get it and you're going to go, I don't have to write them all out. I know what's happening. I know exponent law one. How many threes is there multiplied together by the time we're all done? Nine. Did you count them, or did you go, oh, I know how many it's going to be? I just add the two exponents. He's completely blown away the first slide of this PowerPoint. It's done. It's over. He just said, I just added them up. And maybe you were, when you were writing it out, you're going, why is he making me write this out? 
It's because I'm going to show you a lot of different exponent laws. And when your brain thinks back and goes, which exponent law is this? I hope that writing this out one more time will help you remember which exponent law does what, okay? So when it's all over, you don't have to write that second line. If you understand that, of course there's going to be nine of them. If you write out five of them, and then you write out four more of them, that's going to be nine. And that's exponent law number one. Here it is in fancy form, fancy math form. When we go to memorize these things and just right before quizzes and tests go, okay, do I have these down pat? This is a good way to write the exponent law. Instead of writing with threes and fives and fours, we just use letters to show what the pattern is. If you've got x to the exponent a times x to the exponent b, and it doesn't matter what the numbers are, you can just add the exponents, is what we're saying there. You can go right from 3 to the exponent 5 times 3 to the exponent 4, right to here, 3 to the exponent 9. That's what we're trying to get to in this chapter. Is like, <laughs> I'm not writing this out anymore. I can just look at it and know that if it's, hold on, here's some special rules, the two special rules. One has to be the same base. They both have to be 3s. If they're not both 3s, there literally isn't an exponent law to use. Like not sometime later in grade 12, in university or something like that. No, no. If they're not the same base, no exponent law is going to help you. They have to be the same base. Second, it has to be multiplication. You're like, what if it's division? Eh, next slide. Now I'm going to do division right after this. So for multiplication, you just add the two exponents. This is a nice memorization shortcut to the words he already said. He said, just add the exponents. That's all this is saying here. That's all that's in the box here that says, hey, if you're multiplying with the same base, add the exponents. Yeah, so it's a, it's a fancier way of writing it. And once we have a few exponent laws together, it'll be a good way to reference it too. How many of you saw this exponent law in grade 8? That's what I was thinking is that it might be about half and half. Often schools get to it, but because of COVID, we might not have covered it everywhere. But I'm hoping I'm explaining it in such a way that people who hadn't seen it before are like, okay, well, that's not the worst ever. Anyways, and I've got loads of practice coming for you anyways. Let's try and practice it out. In the homework, write this one out. 5 to the exponent 3 times 5 to the exponent 7. No, don't write it all out. Don't write 5 times 5 times 5. 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. No, just write 5 to the exponent 3 times 5 to the exponent 7. And someone tell me how that can be simplified using this exponent law that I've shown you without having to write it all out. Do, 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 do. 5 to the exponent 10. What did you do? She added the exponents. Now, there's two things. The next, person, the next question we do, there's two things I'm going to ask the next person. Is what two things have to be true before we use this exponent law? One is the bases have to be the same. And two, it has to be multiplication. First thing, if bases aren't the same, there's not going to be an exponent law to help us. If it's division, we'll have a new law. And we'll show that in a minute. How about this one? Negative 2 to the power of 4 times negative 2 to the power of 3 times another negative 2. I, at this point in the lesson, I'm really hoping that's like, so that's what the homework is? I'll be done in like five seconds. And that's actually sort of true about this homework. It might go really, really fast. So the only reason for this example here is to just see if there's some way I can trick you with this whole situation. or Get, get ready for special situations so you, you know everything about this. Negative 2 to the power of 4 times negative 2 to the power of 3 times negative 2. What would it come out to be as a power, not as a final number? She says 8. You're right. Okay, so you, now you see how I do that. I'm going to continue to do that all semester where I go. I first tell her she's right. So what I say next is meant to mess her up a little bit. And hopefully she can explain her way out of it. Because what I'm going to say is wrong. Okay? Right? But 4 and 3 is 7. I thought we just add the exponents. How did you get up to 8? Yeah, so just like um, last chapter, where we, when we didn't know uh, something, we could put in a 1, it also works here very similarly. And it's not a trick, actually. I call it a trick. It's not a trick. It's the truth. How many times is negative 2 multiplied here? 4 times. How many times is negative 2 multiplied here? 3 times. And how many times is negative 2 multiplied by here? Once. Yeah, so there's always an exponent of 1 you can put on there if you need it. Just like last chapter, there's always a denominator of 1 if you, if you need it, if that, if that helps in the question. <coughs> Any questions about that one? <coughs> Excuse me. 
That's good. Well, this is where we're going, folks. We're heading for variables. I mean, variables are where it's at. We practice with these numbers, but it, our time's running out on practicing with numbers. We really want to be about exponents. So apparently there's some number x, and at this, and you're not going to like this chapter. This chapter, we're almost never going to know what x actually is. Next chapter, we'll, we'll do that. We'll, we'll, we'll know what x is. For now, there's some number x. Could be a 7, could be a 23, could be a 4.2. I don't know what it is. But it gets multiplied together 16 times. And then whatever that x is, it gets multiplied together five more times. Can you put these together using the exponent laws without actually knowing what the number is? And yes. Same. Yeah, they're both the same variable. They're the same base, and it's multiplying, so you can just add them together and get x to the 21. And we never, know, and we never do know what x is. And that's okay. In fact, it's a good thing. You're going to find out way later in math. It's like... We'll be wanting to solve for x is what we'll be after, and we're going to want to simplify first. So a lot of simplification rules here. Any questions about that last one? Is it good? If that's good, you're going to love the next slide. It's a little bit of writing, but it, it really, it, here, I'll give it away. If multiplying becomes adding, then dividing becomes, okay, I'll, well, I'll show you, but, but you, you may already know it. You may be like, oh, I know what's going to happen. Here. Law number two, please write it down carefully so when you have to look back and you're studying for it and you're wondering about stuff, you have it available to yourself. Law number two, the division law. And here's the big idea. Imagine we were dividing instead, and it's 4 to the power 5 divided by 4 to the power 3. You seemed unmystified by what 4 to the power of 5 means. So let me just write it out there. For you. Your break is at 2 o'clock. Okay. Now this next part is a little bit weird. I, I say a little bit weird. Because I, I have to explain it just right so you understand what's happening. What's 4 divided by 4? Ryder. 1. Yeah? And so in questions like this, a lot of times what you get is f a lot of 4 divided by 4s. See, multiplication and division are very friendly. You don't need bed mass. You know, uh, d bed mass said division and multiplication are all in the same layer, which means you can do them around any way you want. So I'm going to do some of the division right now and say, oh, that's going to be 4 divided by 4. That's going to be 1. That's going to be 4 divided by 4. That's, there's sets of these 4 divided by 4s, and they can just go. Can you see the red line? My, uh... I need a new light bulb for my uh, active board there, but these two fours just got canceled. Cancel's not really the right word. All we've said is it's four divided by four, and four divided by four is one. So if you, you may as well not even do it. You can just cancel it right out and say it's, it, it's gone. Next, four divided by four. Next, four divided by four. So after that's all done, all the fours in the numerator cancel with all the fours in the denominator that are available to you, and you're left with... 4 times 4, called 4 squared. Can you see a shortcut now? Maybe you already saw it coming. What's the shortcut to go from up here, 4 to the power 5 over 4 to the power 3, all the way down there to 4 to the power 2? Just subtract, okay? So you're un you should be unimpressed by exponent laws at this point in the lesson. You're like, yeah, that's no problem. It's not about till halfway through the second lesson that you start to go, oh, this is like juggling balls. That's what this, this chapter is going to be like. I give you one, and you're like, Give you one ball, and you're like, yeah, so this isn't so hard. And then I give you a second one later on today, and you're like, okay, so this is getting interesting. You know? And then I give you a third one, and you're like, uh-oh, things are getting real here. You know what I mean? And then things start to happen. And I start throwing the fourth and the fifth one in there, and things go crazy, right? That's what this chapter is like. So enjoy the easiness right now. You zip through this homework, you're like, I love it. Love it. Good. Love it while it lasts. Here it is in that short form. If you've got x to the a over x to the b, same base. Division, what happens with the two exponents? You just subtract them. That simple. Uh, okay, I just have to mention this. It's not a big deal for us right now, but it's not true if the x happens to be 0. It's going to take a long time for us to deal with that, but we can't divide by 0. That can't ever happen. 
you can't take something and divide it into zero pieces. That's never a thing. You're like, oh no, I learned about that. Anytime you get zero, you, you get answer zero. Yeah, they never asked you divide by zero. They were careful. No worksheet ever says divide by zero because they know it's a problem, okay? It's not a big deal for us. I'm not sneaking in on a test or something like that. It's not gonna come up. It's just technically we have to mention it. We won't get a real good taste of this till grade 11 actually about how to deal with this. If you're really wondering it, about it, you can text me or let me know, but for now, it's not a problem for you at all. You can even not write it if you want. Yeah, if, it's, if you're worried about it at all, yeah? For now, that's the, that's the law, right? Here's the examples. 4 to the power 9 over 4 to the power 7. Using this exponent law, what would you get? Four to the power two. Now let me ask you, what was it about the situation that allowed you to use this law? There were two things that had to happen before we could use it. What was the one of the two things that had to happen? Same base. If it's not same base, we don't have. There's no exponent laws out there that can help us. What was the operation that had to occur to end up with subtraction, division? Okay, so I'm really trying to impress these two laws. So you got you can now juggle two balls when you see them. Yeah, multiplication, division. All right, to variables. Yeah, z to the power 8 divided by z to the power 2. It's not written by like a fraction this time. It's written with a division sign, but same results, same, same, same stuff. What would you get this time? z to the power 6, yeah, you just subtract the 2. The two things that are important is that it's the same variable and that it's division. And here, this monstrosity looks like big trouble, but it's really not. Negative 6 to the power 50 over negative 6 to the power 30. Is it the same base? Is it the same base? And so what can I do? Yeah, you can use the division law to say, okay, subtract the two exponents and I get negative six to the power 20. Something this big, actually, we usually leave it as an exponent. As this chapter goes on, I'll start talking about when do we leave it as an exponent and when should we write out the number? And there's not a rule. There's just something we'll sort, of, we'll sort of agree on. You know, we'll just say, well, about this big, you might want to leave it as an exponent. Yeah, well, we'll talk about that. Never something I'll hold it to because there's no rules, actually. You want to leave it as an exponent? You're totally allowed to. You want to, leave, you want to write out the whole big number? You can, too. Yeah. Suffice it to say, negative 6 to the power of 20 is a really big number. This is much easier to write than whatever never, negative 6 to the power of 20 comes out to be. Yeah. More time here? What did I say? There's four laws in this lesson. That was two. Number three, power over product. This one's weird, but nice by the end. At first, it'll be just a little strange, and then it'll, it'll become clear. Here's the big idea. If you have five times two to the power of three, so there's a five and a two in there. Now, everyone's immediate reaction is, can't I just multiply the five times two together? And the answer is, yeah, you really could. But that's not the point I'm trying to make. So stick with me for the whole slide to see why I'm not going to do that. Next, some people say, don't you have to multiply the 5 times 2 together? Bedmass says, do what's in the brackets first. And if this lesson's making perfect sense to you so far, you might want to listen to this part. Bedmass is the beginning of wisdom, not the end. There are other choices to make. Bedmass isn't, you must do these things. It's, you could do these things. And I'm going to spend the next couple of months teaching you options. So, bed mass is still a thing. I could do what's in the brackets first. Unless I know something else, and the something else is here. Okay? So, bed mass has been hammered on you so much that you think that's the only option. I'm going to show you some other options to bed mass. In this particular question, if you were actually given this question... You'd use bed mass. Why wouldn't you? 5 times 2 is 10. 10 to the power of 3 is 1,000. Done. Yeah? Uh, so I'm not arguing against bed mass. I'm just showing something else you could do. And by the end of the slide, hopefully you'll see why we might want to have this available to us. Okay? So if I were to write that out, instead of doing bed mass, if I were to actually write the whole thing out, what you'd get is 5 times 2 times 5 times 2 times 5 times 2. It's, it has cubed on it, so I've got to write it three times. And multiplication is very friendly which means you can do it in any order you want. 
I could do 5 times 2 times 5 times 2 times 5 times 2, or I could do 5 times 2 times 5 times 2 times 5 times 2, or I could do 5 times 5 times 5 times 2 times 2 times 2. As you're writing that all out, you're like, are you, are you, you trying to kill me here on a, on a Monday? i got to write this all out? No. In this example, we're writing it all out, so that in the homework, we don't have to write it all out, because we'll be like, oh, I've got a shortcut. This 5 times 5 times 5 becomes 5 cubed, and this 2 times 2 times 2 becomes 2 cubed, and now I'm ready for, law, for this new law. Can anyone jump from this line up here, 5 times 2 all cubed, down to this line and just say, oh, here's what you do. You don't have to write that all out. You could just do this. What is the this? Yeah, each of these get an exponent. 5 gets an exponent 3. 2 gets exponent 3. So I, I ask the question again and again in class, and you'll get bored with me asking the question, but I'll say, which one of these things in the brackets gets exponent 3? And the answer is, they both get exponent 3. That whole thing in the brackets has exponent 3. So the 5 gets exponent 3, and the 2 gets exponent 3. And again, your brain's screaming, but isn't it easy? Hold on, hold on, stop. Isn't it easier just to multiply the 5 and the 2 together? And the answer is a big yes if they are numbers. If they're variables, I won't be able to do that. We're getting ready for variables here. So bed mass is a thing if you can do it. You should do it if you can. But if you can't, we're getting some new rules here of what you could do. Here's the law written out like this, and I'm going to say it again. x, y to the exponent a, which of these variables inside the brackets gets exponent a? Both. Yeah? It's not that exciting an answer. It sounds like I'm setting you up, and I am. I'm saying which one, I'm trying to fool you into believing that maybe you don't have to apply the exponent to both, and, but the answer is both. They both get exponent a. Some great arrows there. I suggest you really draw those arrows. Of everything on that slide, draw the arrows. And this is what I was talking about. You see, bed mass is a thing. We'd like to do what's inside the brackets first, but we can't multiply x and y together because we don't know what x and y are. So, bed mass will not help us. We move on from bed mass and go, what else do we have? We've got exponent law number three. And exponent law number three says, if there's an exponent outside of brackets, and the things inside are being multiplied, which one of them gets the exponent of four? He said trying to be big time repetitive. Which one gets exponent of four? Both get exponent 4. That simple. But you can see what's starting to happen here. We're getting a lot of balls in the air. All, and some of the questions will have all these law built into one. You're going to see some of those examples before I'm done this lesson. How about this? I've got, now I've got a 3, a P, and a Q. Which one gets exponent 4 if they're all in the brackets? All of them get exponent 4. And in this particular case, then I can go a step farther. I don't know what p to the power 4 is because they haven't told me what p is yet. I don't know what q to the power 4 is because they haven't told me what q is. But I can do 3 to the exponent 4. So if you get down to numbers and you can do them, you should do them. Sounds like I'm switching my answer here. Up here I said, oh, don't multiply them together. And I was just trying to show off the law. When you get a chance to do something with numbers, you should definitely do it. And so I get an 81 p to the 4, q to the 4. Unless this number is incredibly large. 81 is a reasonable number to write down, I think. I don't think you should be too scared of 81. If it came down to 4052444575, you might be like, uh, maybe I'll just leave it as an exponent. Right? So no real rule there about when you have to multiply it out. Okay? Sometimes we agree on 100,000. Some years we sort of agree on 100,000. Smaller than 100,000, we'll just write it out. Bigger than 100,000, we'll leave it as an exponent. But it's still not a rule. It's just like, hmm, what would be a good number to choose? Questions on that one? So I said there was three laws I was going to show you today. This law I've already showed you in another section. Then it was called power of fraction. You've already used it. But now we call it power of a quotient. I don't know why we make the distinction between the two. It works exactly the same. 
So this is not a big surprise. 2 over 3 the exponent 4, we learned that that was 2 thirds times 2 thirds times 2 thirds times 2 thirds. And the tops get multiplied together, then bottoms get multiplied together, and you get exponent 4 on each. I've already seen some people on their test use this properly. If you've got an A outside the brackets and it's division inside, they both get the exponent A and you did this in another lesson. Does it ring a bell from fractions? You got an exponent outside of a fraction, each thing gets the, the exponent on there. It only came up twice in the test and there was another way to do it. If you didn't think of it this way, there was another way to do it. You could have just wrote it out. So um, don't panic if you're like, I never used that on the test. You didn't actually have to. You could have been smart enough just to do the question without this. But the actual law is, if you've got a quotient, inside brackets, they both get exponent 4. So it's really the same law as the multiplication one. They both get exponent 4. How do we use it? Negative 3 quarters squared. Which of these gets exponent 2? Both. That's the magic answer in this particular lesson. They both get exponent 2. So negative 3 gets squared and 4 gets squared, and I get positive 9 over 16. I think I did that slide really fast on purpose because I really wanted you to see that this was no big deal. But you might need more time to copy before we do our last, our final examples. My big goal was to be done by 110. And I'm on pace to do that, I think. Because then you've got your break at, oh, oh, no good. This is going to be two parts. So I'll do one more example. You'll take your break. When you come back, I'll finish the last example. I'm sorry that makes so much noise, but it's a big adjustment problem up here. I've got my new... Uh, Attachment at the top that makes me look like a giant dork, but it really helps with the microphones. It holds up my whole mask thing up. First, do you have any questions about this law? Uh, I don't have it signed out, and I don't know if we'll have time. Okay? By the time I finish that second lesson, we might be short on time. But I will check. When I finish teaching for the day, I'll go check it out. She's very disappointed. She's giving me the disappointed look. I just need to tell you, um, both guys and girls, but more the girls than the guys, I have two daughters, so the disappointed look has no effect on me whatsoever. I'm totally used to it, where you look at me like. Huh? But you can try it if you want. I'll try. That's what I can do. I'll try. <laughs> Any questions here about the math? More time? Does this one ring a bell? Maybe for me, I don't, I, I don't think elementary school gets to this one very often, but for me in the previous chapter, we talked about with fractions, you just take the exponent and put it on each piece if you want. Now you're going to want to be able to do that. Combining the laws, so I've got five quick examples to do. I put them on a separate sheet, though, for me. Uh, discard that. Here are the five examples. What I'm going to try and do is get one of these done before your break. Right, your break's at 1 o'clock? No, no, I'm not. Totally separate. Uh, make sure we're not running into someone else's break here. Your break's at 1 o'clock, yes? Am I crazy? Do I have that right? Is that what you're used to? In your, uh, okay, so when you get back from your break, then I'll do these, these examples, okay? So take your break early. You're not running into anyone else. But be back in your desk for 105 to start these examples.